Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Rex, and I'm not a doctor yet by any means, but I am a first year medical student at Duke University. So in today's video, and going forward every Sunday, I wanna make a video sort of reflecting on my past week a little bit, but also sharing something with you that I learned in that week. And I'm really hoping that every week going forward, I have something that I learned in that week, and if I haven't, I'm really doing something wrong, so please yell at me in the comments. That being said, welcome to Something I Learned Sunday. All right, so I'm one week in, and we really did clinically focused stuff. It's sort of two weeks of clinical immersion. So I learned a ton of really cool stuff. It's really weird for me that every week I sort of would finish undergrad and sort of feel like, ah, did I learn anything this week? cannot say that whatsoever in medical school. I have learned a ton, a lot of super interesting stuff. Most of it was focused on how to be a clinician and how to interview patients. So I learned some cool acronyms. So the classic acronym is old CARTS. And so that sort of was interesting to hear as only having been a patient, but understanding that that's sort of the questions doctor ask, doctors ask. So old CARTS is basically talking about the basic information that a doctor wants to get when they're asking you questions. And this might be useful for you if you're being a patient anytime soon that you sort of can prepare an answer to these ahead of time. So old CARTS is just an acronym talking about what's the onset of the symptoms or the pain, where is the location of it, how long does it last, that is the duration, D, any categorization of the pain, what does it feel like, are there any associated pains or symptoms, are there any alleviating factors that make it better, any aggravating factors that make it worse, does it radiate anywhere? What's the timing of it? What time of day does it happen? How often does it happen? And then what is the severity in just a one through 10? So that was interesting to know just as getting a perspective of my very, very basic understanding of how doctors get a history of a present illness and understand what's going on. So that was cool. But something more that I wanna share in depth with, depth with you is just sort of a fun fact that I can't say I really actually know anything about or really understand the clinical relevance of, but it's agophony. And so we learned, we got to go in and learn the real basics of using a stethoscope to listen to a heart and listen to a lungs. So basically what agophony is, is that if you use your stethoscope and listen to the lungs, ask a patient to say the letter E, what you actually hear instead of the letter E, which you would hear in a healthy patient, is the letter A. And I think he said it was called an E to A transition. I might have the terms wrong. I'm not a doctor yet. I'm barely a medical student yet, but the physics is cool. So basically what he was talking about, what would cause this is if you have a patient, and so this is their torso, and normally they have two lungs, hopefully they have two lungs, that's a trachea, those are some lungs. And so if they have fluid in this space between the chest wall and the lungs, which can be caused by something that I will learn about someday, but I'm not sure what that would be caused by, I'm sure some sort of infection, pneumonia type thing. Um, I guess this is a test to differentiate between fluid on the outside of the lungs and fluid on the inside of the lungs, and that makes sense that it would have clinical relevance, I don't know that yet, but the bottom line is when this happens, that long E now becomes a long A sound. So I was a biomedical engineering major in undergrad, and I actually got to learn a good amount about how speech works, and it's super interesting. And so we're going to do a very quick crash course on how the human body makes different vowel sounds. So we know that we can sing different notes. And so when we sing different notes, that has a certain pitch. So we sing at some certain frequency and it makes a perfect sound wave would be a perfect pitch. But humans are not perfect musical instruments. And additionally, we can have an A sound like the same note as an E or an O and an O. So when we sing, it's not just a perfect little sine wave. Rather, it's some very complicated waveform that I can't draw, and it, it looks crazy and something you can't understand whatsoever. But if you look at it in a frequency spectrum by doing a Fourier transform, and you don't have to really know what that is, but the bottom line is you can break this up and plot it where you have a magnitude on this one axis and then the actual frequency on this axis. And you'll see that this really complicated thing up here 
can be plotted and made up of it's got some little bit of a frequency here that's 10 hertz and some part that's this many hertz and this many hertz and this many hertz all the way up to give or take 20,000 hertz or something like that. That's what we can hear. I actually don't know what we can make noises of, but you get some plot that's very complicated. And so vowels are made by in a perfect note, there is always the underlying tone that is the note you're singing and that's spread out and it should decrease by these different overtones steadily. And that's just a result of the different harmonics in your, in your throat and whether your trachea is more open and your mouth is closed and all kinds of complicated stuff that I am not an expert in. But I do know there's these thing called formants. And so a formant is basically where it modifies this plot where now there's spikes at different places. And based on where those spikes are determines what vowel is being said. So an A might look something like this. And an E might look something like this, where it spikes up there. And so these are really bad pictures and, and not to scale whatsoever. But the bottom line is you can look up plots, and I'll throw one up right here, that shows that, okay, there's like a first formant at 300 hertz and then a second formant at 600 hertz. That tells you no matter what pitch you're singing at, what vowel, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do you're singing, there's always gonna be these spikes in the frequency spectrum right here at this hertz and right there and that hertz. And that is like the definition scientifically of the vowel E or a uh or ooh. And that really works well with how ears work and that we actually hear by different frequencies, different parts of our ears hear this hertz, different part of our ear hears that hertz. So I actually was wondering that, okay, this makes a ton of sense to me that if we have fluid in between the air in our lungs and our chest, that fluid will somehow act as a filter. It's either gonna get rid of some high frequency noise, noise, it's gonna get part of the higher frequencies are gonna not travel through the water as well as it would, would normally go from just lung air to a little bit of cavity out the chest and you would hear with the stethoscope, the fluid's either gonna make the high pitch sounds heard more or the low pitch sounds heard more. So I was curious which, so I looked it up and it, the internet told me that what happens is when you have the fluid in the lungs, it gets rid of some of the high pitches and sort of magnifies the low pitches. So being the bit of a tech nerd I am and the engineer that I am, I went ahead and recorded my own voice. And so here I have two plots. This is me from me saying the vowel E, sort of singing it. I won't play that because I cannot sing well. And there's me doing the vowel A. And so these plots are now, what I did is I did a fast fit Fourier transform of it and plotted the frequency spectrum. So at the bottom are the different frequencies of my voice. And so this is like 1500 Hertz, 3500 Hertz, 5000 Hertz, and so on. It's the same plot down here. These axes are slightly different because I am not a good singer and couldn't sing at the exact same volume twice in a row, right back to back, but I tried my best. So I tried to, but the important thing is the shape of it. So this is a lot of noise because I'm not a perfect singer and this was not a perfect s setup, but sort of if I were to draw this, it would go down and it would spike there. I'd sort of trace the envelope, something like that. And so the important formants are around this area are the two main important formants where normally there would just be this slow slope down and also note that this is a log plot that these these hertz are actually much much lower than they appear it's a log plot um, so it makes it look all around the same height even though they shouldn't be and this a if you notice it actually sort of has an envelope that spikes up there and then goes down and so that makes a ton of sense that what the fluid in our lungs is doing is it's magnifying these low frequency sounds. So if we were to take this plot here and have some filter that magnifies just this chunk here, all of a sudden this plot will turn into this plot. And so that E will now sound like an A. And so that's what is happening in the fluid. It's acting 
as a filter that a sound filter that amplifies those lower frequency notes happening to be those lower frequency those lower frequencies and it just happens to do it in the right way that that e now sounds like an a and that's something that is like really complicated to show and really complicated scientifically but someone must have figured that out a long time ago because all it takes is a little stethoscope to figure it out and you can perform a rather significant diagnostic test as part of your physical exam and i thought that was just an awesome cool finding that i wanted to share with you guys and i hope you guys learned something from this video i definitely learned a ton this week and so that's my goal every sunday is to share something that i learned with you hopefully in a way that is somewhat relatable and not super technical so if you want to keep learning along with me as i go on my journey in medical school make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay notified Make sure to leave a like on the video, questions, comments, or concerns. I'd love to hear about them down below. Until I see you guys again, don't be ordinary, go be great.